Hey traders, Raggy here and in this recap video I want to cover what I think is a very common mistake a lot of futures index traders make, meaning traders who are looking at the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, even the Russell, what's a common mistake that they make and it's really about prioritizing the order in which we should be thinking about an entry. Now most traders, and, and again this is not going to apply equally to everybody, but what I find after trading and teaching traders for over, gosh, two decades plus now, the, the ES, the ES contract, the NQ, the Dow, these are relatively new contracts. Before this were the pit traded full size contracts and then in 99 to 2001, these E-mini, these electronic minis were released to uh, retail traders and, and they've been fantastic. I don't miss those pit traded days <laughs> at all, quite frankly. But one of the things that happens is a lot of traders are still very focused on the S&P. This is their number one focus each and every morning. And, and if, if I can, let me, you know, let's suspend disbelief for a moment and imagine that there was not an S&P. It was just Dow, it was NASDAQ, it was Russell. Just these four. Maybe then you can throw the Nikkei in there if you'd like. And you're looking at these. And when you understand the weightings of these, you realize that the Russell actually is very, very evenly weighted when it comes to not only the sectors, there's only about a 4% difference between the number one heaviest weighted sector and the fifth heaviest weighted sector. And then in NASDAQ, we know it's dominated by tech and communications. And then if we look at the Dow, you know, and, and how do you, by the way, I know a lot of folks ask me that, say, Rog, how do you even know that? All you need to do is go to a site like ETFDB. This is one of my favorite free services. Let's type in the DIA, which would be the Dow ETF. Click on the holdings. And yes, we can see the 30 something holdings, but then let's go to the sector breakdown right in here. And you'll notice industrials, tech, financials, healthcare, cyclicals, right? And look at the percentages. So by the time you get down to cyclicals, it's roughly half the weight of the industrials. So, you know, each sector has its weighting, but what's it dominated by? Industrials. So I've got a pretty good idea of what's gonna be, you know, keeping the market up, keeping the market down, depending upon the weighting. So I've got tech on one hand, I've got industrials on the other, and basically small cap in the Russell where it's really evenly weighted. There's no one of the top five that dominate the Russell. All right, so we've got that set. Your S&P ends up being a very quirky mix of kind of like the Dow, and yet kind of like, very much like really, the NASDAQ. And again, take a look at the holdings. It's dominated by tech, and then healthcare, and then financials. So when I'm trying to understand what's going on in any one of these futures contracts, one of the easiest ways to realize which sector is carrying the market higher or lower, which one's contributing, is to break down the market into a view like this. Now this might seem really busy until you realize that your main market is here, here's your S&P, and then in order, each sector is weighting the appropriate ETF. And we have that for the Dow, the bottom, the NAS in the middle, and the S&P on top. Now, here's what I want you to think about. If the S&P acts a little bit like the Dow, because it does, and it acts a lot like the tech because of the QQQ weighting, the S&P really should be the last index you think about trading. And only once you get a good reading of the Dow or the NAS and you realize which sectors are taking the NASDAQ higher or lower, and same thing with the Dow. And if those sectors match up with the S&P, the S&P is going to track with the NASDAQ or the Dow mostly. It's going to pick one or the other almost every day. Sometimes it's kind of torn between them, but it's still going to have a preference. And the way you know the preference is by looking at the sectors. So that's number one. Number two is before you trade the S&P, you really should have a trade setting up in either the NASDAQ or the Dow, depending upon which it's trending with. Today into the close, we focused on NASDAQ shorts and Dow shorts. And if you wanted to get long, you went long the Russell because your, your watch list for buys cannot be the same names as your watch list for shorts because you're looking for relative performance leaders to the upside, like Russell, or relative performance leaders to the downside, like the NASDAQ and the Dow. Another way to visualize this, let me show you how we do this on toss and it does look really, really good. 
All right, so this is it. This is the sectors where I've got the S&P and the large, what I call the tide category, and all these individual sectors in the boats. And this is not in any particular order. This is just a really great way to look at the broader markets via the S&P and a number of important sectors. Another way that you can look at this, and this would be more like the trade station version that I just showed you, is to look at this layout. Here's the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, and then the top three weighted sectors from left to right. Now these will change a little bit. You gotta throw the XLC in here now. And then what I'll do is I'll throw our trade flags on the chart. So now at a glance, I can get an idea of what's happening with each one of these sectors. So I'll just activate, I'm just activating them here with you in this video. And I have a layout like this. So you can see what the S&P is doing. Let's put the trade flag on there. Okay, so there's a trade flag. And there's a number, there's a number of trade flags that we have. I don't want to confuse the, the issue here, but let's, let's focus on what's known as the JT trend. Okay, it looks like it looks at the uh, propulsion dot EMAs that I watch 81321 and then the wave and the grab candles to give you a bullish or neutral reading. Now, when you have this across every single one of the symbols you watch, you know at a glance what kind of mood that symbol is ultimately in. So that gives you a really good idea on whether or not tech is leading or lagging. Um, XLF and communications were actually XLF, sorry, and uh, healthcare were leading today. And, and the market's closed, but you can actually see this really clearly right in here. Now, the, the wave has since gone sideways. This is a five minute chart. But earlier in the day, that's where most of your strength was coming from. Your, the, the sectors that were bucking the trend were financials and healthcare. And it's very easy, very easy, when you use the trade flags in a layout like this. Hope this was helpful. I know it ran a little long, but again, hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next update.